Dark psychological marketing techniques, aggressively targeting kids, and the destruction of local farmlands. These aren't concepts you would associate with your favorite beverage. Then again, the average consumer is sorely misinformed about the products they use. Sure, most people understand that you don't become one of the largest corporations on the face of the planet without committing a few atrocities. But what many will never uncover is the magnitude of the secrets of the Coca-Cola company. The drink would go on to dominate the beverage market and enslave generations like no other before it. So buckle up, you'll be surprised. In the year 2022, the Coca-Cola Beverage Company spent over $4 billion on marketing its unique brand of soda to unsuspecting customers. For a drink so popular, it's mind-boggling why the company would need to spend that much money on it. To really understand how we got here, we have to take a trip down memory lane to 1865. A pharmacist and Confederate vet named John Pemberton sustained a wound that would lead him down a path of no return. To ease the chronic pain from his injury, Pemberton looked to morphine to make his days bearable. After years of battling with his sickness, he discovered the healing properties of coca wines. This led to experiments to devise an alternative to the morphine he had gotten addicted to. Soon after Pemberton began his quest to find the magical tonic, he doubled down on the coca leaves. He mixed them with various herbs and spices until he arrived at his magnum opus, a dark syrup tonic dubbed Pemberton's French Wine Coca. At the time of its creation, the temperance movement was gaining ground in Atlanta, it encouraged abstinence from alcoholic beverages, and Pemberton feared for his creation. It didn't take long for the pharmacist to formulate his tonic into a non-alcoholic drink that could be enjoyed by everyone. With help from his bookkeeper Frank Robinson, Pemberton coined the name Coca-Cola, while Robinson created the iconic script logo that would become synonymous with the brand. Pemberton and Robinson placed advertisements in the Atlanta Journal to introduce the world to this new beverage. They invited people to try the new and popular soda fountain drink. The response was positive and Coca-Cola quickly gained popularity. It captivated the taste buds of locals with its unique flavor profile. The soft drink was first sold to the public at the Soda Fountain in Jacob's Pharmacy in Atlanta on May 8, 1886. Despite the success of his wonder drink, Pemberton made a total of $50 the first year, with operating costs coming in at $70. To add insult to injury, Pemberton battled with debt and morphine addiction that led to his death in 1888. Coke was meant to be a morphine-free alternative to cure his drug problem, but it never did the man any good. After Pemberton's tragic death, his son sold the remaining shares of the company for a measly $9,000. However, he had no idea that the drinks would ever become the biggest and most iconic drinks in the world. The average Mexican drinks more than 700 cups of Coca-Cola a year, which amounts to double what the typical American consumes. It might sound crazy how an obscure drink from rural Atlanta could do those numbers, but the journey to world domination only started after its inventor's death. John Pemberton may have created Coke, but Asa Griggs Candler saw the untapped potential of the beverage industry. After acquiring the right to the beverage, Candler set his sights on expanding Coca-Cola's reach beyond its Atlanta roots. Candler spared no expense in promoting his new drink. He invested heavily in advertising and marketing strategies that were far ahead of their time. He even developed an intricate network of bottlers, empowering entrepreneurs across the country to bring Coca-Cola to local communities. This groundbreaking idea allowed Coca-Cola to become accessible to all, solidifying its presence in the hearts and minds of the American public. But Candler's ambitions didn't stop at national borders. He recognized the potential for global expansion. In 1899, he secured the first international bottling contract for his fledgling company. This paved the way for Coca-Cola to journey beyond the shores of the United States. Once it left the States, Coke became a raging bull that couldn't be stopped. Copycat competitors like Pepsi and Dr. Pepper were born at the time, but they were nowhere near Coke. Candler's aggressive marketing approach is still felt today with how the company goes about campaigns to fuel its popularity. The company once entered a partnership with Olive Garden to brainwash the public. They developed covert suggestive selling techniques to encourage the purchase of carbonated beverage. These techniques were so successful that both companies saw a significant bump in sales, plus an overall movement away from healthy water to carbonated drinks. Targeting unsuspecting customers isn't even the worst thing the company has done. When a company doesn't know when to draw the line, things get worse. For decades, companies like Coca-Cola have poured trillions of dollars into developing crazy advertising techniques, basically hacking the human brain to make you buy more products. 
You would agree that the most pervasive advertising technique are those that target children, and when it comes to the Coca-Cola company, nobody does selling to kids as well as them. They use colorful and engaging ads featuring animated characters and catchy jingles, plus tie-ins with popular movies or TV shows to capture children's attention. Without trying to scramble your brain, you should remember a Coca-Cola ad from your childhood. Their ads are so good, they make you want to reach for a refreshing bottle of Coke. We often look up to the government to protect us from greedy companies who won't stop at anything to make a few bucks at our expense. But with a company like Coca-Cola, there is no regulation or oversight. The company even goes as far as bending the facts to achieve its goals. In 2015, the New York Times revealed that Coca-Cola funded a global network of scientists to obscure the facts in their favor. They tried to divert attention from the contribution of soda to the obesity epidemic. Today, more than one third of the adults in the US are obese. This is all thanks to the consumption of kilojoules of calories, and soda plays an important part in that dynamic. And that is just the tip of the iceberg, because when it comes to Coca-Cola, the atrocities just keep rolling in. Cuba and North Korea are the only countries where Coca-Cola isn't sold on our big blue planet. Like a crocodile biting down on its prey, the Coca-Cola company is an unrelenting monstrosity that must keep growing. They will do anything and everything to ensure the dark sugar water gets to the tables of addicted consumers. Governments in developed nations try to protect their people from the monster that is the Coca-Cola company, but people in developing countries don't have that luxury. For instance, in India in 2003, Coca-Cola plants drew up so much water that it turned the surrounding rice paddies into deserts. This destroyed thousands of crops meant for poor farmers who survive on less than $3 a day. The company has also taken a somewhat practical approach to dominating regions where they operate. They make strategic partnerships with powerful individuals and claw their way to real influence. It results in the annihilation of competitors, solidifying its spot as the top dog when it comes to soda. The company used this tactic to help Vicente Fox get elected as the country's first elected president in 2000. Vicente was a former head of Coca-Cola Mexico and the head of the company's Latin American operations. Some people might see nothing wrong here, but the truth is it proves that the company is more powerful than most people know. With Vicente's help, soda companies cornered the Mexican market, with Coke coming out on top with a 73% market share. A market share like that in a country like Mexico means insane profits. The beverage giant has replicated or tried to replicate its success in Mexico in other countries to this day. All you have to do is look in the right places. If you're looking for more human rights violations, taking a trip down to Guatemala should do the trick. The Central American country is known for its rich and distinct culture, with earnest, hard-working people. People. The Guatemalan people are no strangers to the atrocious Coca-Cola company. In the 70s and 80s, the country was rocked with campaigns of violence that included attempted murder and murder against two Guatemalan trade unionists. For years, Guatemalan workers at the Coca-Cola bottling plant endured unbearable working conditions. When the workers decided to unionize to improve things, the company utilized systematic intimidation, kidnapping, and torture to ensure things remain the same. Large corporations like Coca-Cola fear the word union like a vampire fears sunlight. These corporations will do anything in their power to stop workers from demanding better working conditions because it hurts their profit margins. If history has taught us anything, you don't mess with their profit margins. After the dust settled, eight union members were murdered and four were kidnapped, never to be seen again. The kinds of atrocities that happened at the Coke plant in Guatemala City continue to be an issue at Coke bottling plants in other countries today. For instance, Colombia's history with Coca-Cola has been that of personal attacks on workers and their courageous attempts to form unions. In Colombia, the company took a different approach involving criminalizing its victims. With corrupt institutions, the empire of sugary water lobbied to make unions illegal, thereby turning the police against the people. Same as in Guatemala, the people of Colombia suffered significantly just to line the pockets of a few fat men at the top. Moving away from the harm to humans, the beverage company is also a giant thorn in the flesh of Mother Nature. As the world's worst plastic polluter, it's the worst kind of company. It held that title for five years in a row, and countries were powerless due to the massive taxes they gained from the company. Given its global presence and extensive product range, the company creates vast amounts of plastic bottles and packaging, trying to calculate 
calculate the numbers is an exercise in futility. Most of Coca-Cola's atrocities don't make headlines because with all the money in the world, you can get the media to say anything you want. The company also utilizes the best lawyers in every country, so you know they wipe the floor with common men in court. In the media today, the Coca-Cola company loves to pretend that it upholds the tenets of human rights, but it's nothing more than a self-serving publicity ploy. The company does invest to help improve access to drinking water and to help empower women in several countries, but it doesn't make up for years of complete disregard for human life. Nobody does posturing as well as the company that claimed it has helped improve the lives of over 18 million people. From its humble origins as a medicinal tonic in a small Atlanta laboratory, to an international company offering a wide range of products that cater to diverse tastes and preferences, Coca-Cola has become an enduring symbol of happiness, unity, and a monstrosity of a company that knows no bounds. Corporations like the Coca-Cola company continue to flourish, despite the damage they cause, and we can only hope that its chaotic reign will come to an end. Do you think the Coca-Cola company will ever answer for its crimes? Let us know in the comments below.